Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Hey guys, 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 welcome to the first episode of Working Money, getting your money working for you. For all you haters of the intro out there, that one's for you. Guys, today marks the second year that I've been doing the Working Money Channel. So I thought I'd make a special intro for all of you guys out there. More of a compilation uh, of some of my intros from uh, videos from past episodes. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Two years today, I wouldn't be here without you guys. I wanted to thank all you guys for watching the show. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks guys. And without further ado, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So what have we got here? This is Bitcoin on the hourly. And guys, you can see yesterday we had a bit of a tumble for Bitcoin. Same with the rest of the crypto space. We got Bitcoin here on the hourly, as I had mentioned, right now trading at 94.90. Uh, and we got XRP up here trading at 19.3.193 cents. A bit of a downturn, okay? A bit of a sell-off. Uh, let's put it on the daily for a second here. And uh, we're, we can see here, we are still remaining above this uh, former low, but uh, for how long? It's anybody's guess. Uh, let's put BTC on the daily up here. Right, we haven't punctured this 10,500 mark. Uh, it looks like we may be moving lower. It looks like we may be moving back into a level of support. My guess, if we do move down, it'll fall anywhere between tops of wicks, bottoms of tails, somewhere in and around here, maybe 7,100 or so, give or take, but that's still a ways away. Uh, right now, Bitcoin is moving upward despite its uh, fall yesterday. So uh, we are seeing some momentum up. Buyers are trying to buy up Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But ultimately, guys, the market is in red, and we can see along here, look at all these cryptos, and, uh, you know, it's a similar outcome for many of these cryptocurrencies, a sell-off for the altcoins, uh, so that's where we're at, unfortunately, market cap at $268.9 billion. And I thought I'd keep it old school. I'm doing a bit of a analysis on where the price of XRP could go later on in the video. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be comparing it to a former Bitcoin rally. I'm going to take into consideration circulating supply because I know that's a big factor. Also, uh, market capitalization and how it has changed over the years. So guys, it's an interesting analysis on price. Uh, I've never modeled a prediction this way before, so uh, we'll see what you think. But first off, I wanted to get to this. Uh, this from XRP Crypto Wolf Congressman Tom Emmer said the Federal Reserve should be more open about its research and development efforts for its central bank digital currency work. So apparently, they're not getting the results they want from the Fed. U.S. Representative Tom Emmer said Thursday that the U.S. Federal Reserve should be more open about its research and development efforts, focusing on central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs as we all know them. Emmer comments came during an appearance of the House Financial Services Committee, the Task Force on Financial Technology, which met to discuss topics like the digital dollar. During his opening statement, Emmer touched on the Fed's work, calling it a process which I emphatically support, but unfortunately have not received the level of public consideration and transparency that I think is fundamentally necessary for such a pursuit. So his criticism is that uh, the people that are in charge of this digital dollar CBDC thing are keeping things too high hush hush and Tom Emmer wishes to see more transparency with regards to digitizing the US dollar. The dollar is changing, this is a quote, the dollar is changing and Americans deserve a full accounting of the work being done and the consideration they will have to make in ensuring that their leaders continue to guarantee their freedoms and their methods of exchange. So this kind of a thing is just going to get more uh, people scared. If there's no transparency or rather if there's a lack of transparency and uh, Americans can't trust their government with regards to new technology vis-a-vis uh, -vis the U.S. greenback if the system goes in a different way. This is what's going to push more people into alternative currencies like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, obviously being a big one on the list. Uh, we just heard the other day how many investors are, are hedging their bets uh, with a Bitcoin investment or cryptocurrency investment as a whole, rather. 
And so could we see this more? Uh, we've already seen this in countries where hyperinflation has really destroyed their fiat currency. And right now it doesn't look bad. Right now, you know, it looks business as usual. You can still, you know, the US dollar is still valuable in this world, but that could change guys. The Fed continuously printing dollars is not a good sign for the stability of the currency. So thanks so much XRP Crypto Wolf for bringing up this article with regards to the Fed and the fact that, you know, transparency is important for America. Americans entering this new digital age. What about this next one here, guys? Also from XRP Crypto Wolf, Ripple's University Blockchain Research Inifi Initiative, UBRI, has been a transformational force for Professor Harvey's teaching of blockchains at Duke University. So we know Ripple had this uh, initiative where they were helping to fund some university programs to help build blockchain technology, to get a new generation of kids interested in coding. And so now the pandemic has added another element to the mix. So uh, this last semester provided his class with an opportunity to study a potential application of blockchain in real time. The day after the Iowa Democratic Party's debacle in Iowa caucus voting, the class pivoted to examine the reasons for the delay and then explore how blockchain could be used to improve future caucuses. So looking for new verticals, it proves instantaneous, easy to track, completely transparent, and even allowed for mistakes to quickly be corrected by sending back the coins to caucus leaders. So here's just an example of uh, what they were using it for. Let me just move down here. Uh, Professor Harvey believes that blockchain also has immediate application in the fight against the beer flu, specifically as a tool for the effective tracking of beer flu testing, vaccine production, and supply chain improvement. So many use cases for the blockchain. And guys, this UBRI is a Ripple-led initiative. So they are the ones funding it. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these students are learning on uh, the XRPL, obviously an open source system. Uh, so a possibility there. Looking ahead, Professor Harvey believes that blockchain's true potential is not just remaking finance, but as a tool for democracy, improving society in general. And this has always been uh, Ripple's MO as well. To be able to bank the unbanked, to be able to level the playing field, this is what money should be. It shouldn't be that just some top tier banks have all the control of the flow and everybody below them needs to pay them a fee in order to access that. Okay, Ripple is opening it up. Ripple is funding these initiatives to democratize this, also to help along the XRP ecosystem. So this is all great news. And with regards to supply chain, uh, I saw this from XRP Ferguson at TFerg Trades on Twitter. Uh, sent me this. I've been talking about VeChain a little bit in the past few videos. And here's just a flow chart. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this. Some of you who are already interested in VeChain. And so these are some VeChain applications. Uh, we got agriculture, fisheries, telecoms, carbon assets, and automobile. Tech partners, research, bulk commodity, transportation, insurance, smart city, FMCG, fashion, financial, documents, and copyright authentication and logistics. So a lot of these companies we, we can recognize, H&M, DHL, uh, BMW, AWS. We got Dartmouth, University of Oxford, Michigan State University in there. Walmart, of course. And a lot of these companies, uh, Chinese companies, we know VeChain is in cozy with the Chinese government, building partnerships, a big team behind them. Uh, and I didn't realize actually how many partnerships and how many different verticals they are actually focusing on. So that's really interesting to see. Thanks so much, TFERG Trades, for pointing me in this direction. Uh, and I did notice that VeChain, let me bring it up here, guys. It actually didn't actually crash as badly as the rest of the crypto market. Actually, we can see it here on the chart. You can see this big dip for many of the cryptocurrencies. But then when you get down to VeChain, there was some upward movement. Uh, and yes, it did dip, but that dip was ne not nearly as deep as some of these other cryptos. So uh, interesting move there on the charts. Then again, VeChain is still trading under a cent, under a penny at the moment. Uh, so to see it move by leaps and bounds uh, is only pennies, really. Nevertheless, very, very interesting to point out there. XRP Yoda on Twitter uh, sent me this next one, and this one has to do with Santander, a Ripple partner, and how they plan on hiring 3,000 techies this year. That's right. Despite the pandemic, they are hiring 3,000 people within the tech IT industry. Spanish banking giant Santander has vowed to hire 3,000 IT professionals worldwide this year as it pushes on with its digital transformation plan. 
The hires are part of a plan outlined last year when the bank earmarked 20 billion euros for its digital transformation and technology over four years. The new staffers will join the technology and operations division in areas such as platforms and APIs, cloud data network, DevSecOps AI, software development, enterprise architecture, and cybersecurity. Anna Botten, group executive chairman uh, of Banco Santander, says... Having the best technology does not just mean having the best infrastructure applications and processes. It also means having the best, most innovative talent. And so they want to accelerate uh, their operations, obviously looking to uh, move into the future. We know they're already a Ripple partner. Now committed to hiring 3,000 techies in the year 2020 to keep developing their infrastructure, to keep themselves on that digital edge. Great news there for Santander. I saw this from the XRP Arcade. Uh, Dev becomes web monetized via core. So Dev is an online community for sharing and discovering great ideas. Developers help each other grow by submitting stories, tutorials, questions, or anything worth discussing. Dev becomes web monetized on June 11th, which was just yesterday, guys. Dev announced that authors on his platform could now receive micropayments for their content. And guys, here is the tweet to that regard. All you have to do is point your payment pointer to receive micropayments when web monetized browsers visit their profile and posts. Uh, and this is done via coil. In order to start generating micropayments with web monetization, devs need to follow these steps. Set up a wallet. Once the wallet is set up, the user receives a payment pointer address. Add the address in the dev settings. Simple as pie. And this is a coil project. Coil has been keeping busy. Yesterday, we just announced that they did a $1 million strategic investment in technology publishing platform hacker noon uh, and now they are involved in this dev project so amazing news for dev and coil and guys i don't know if you saw this xrp underscore canada pointed this out to me is there an insider in the community that may actually know more than many of us originally thought so this from xrp underscore canada i uh, gotta give him credit for pointing this out xrp researcher tweets this so ripple is either trolling the community or something is up what are your thoughts on this you guys remember this just from yesterday brad garlinghouse did the talk and look at this screen here what does this mean for ripple when he was uh, when he was doing his powerpoint presentation he used this image with some rough waves in the ocean and uh this is the same photograph that mr pool on twitter used way back on may 31st 2020. there's a bubba cugs uh tweet here guarantee nobody picked up on this that image it's the same one pool used ripple likes ships at sea so does bg it's all in the details. Yeah, that's right. BG, bearable guy 123 also used a ship image for his latest riddle. And now we're seeing this, Mr. Pool, the waves. Brad Garlinghouse also uh, showing this in the PowerPoint presentation uh, from his home office just yesterday. So I thought that was uh, quite peculiar. Uh, some people suggesting that maybe Mr. Pool works for Ripple. Uh, Green Eggs and Ham says no, but he knows somebody that is an employee. I think that that sounds most likely in uh, in all reality. Stuart XRP writes, Ripple released a video yesterday. I believe it was recorded in early May. That's uh, that's exactly right. It was written on the video that it was recorded in May uh, and that they just released it yesterday. I have never seen Ripple use that pic before in documents until yesterday. If the tweet picture from Mr. Poole is correct from the end of May, May 31st, what's the odds 657B pick uploaded every year to select the same pick? Interesting. Yeah, I blocked Mr. Poole a long time ago, but I'm stumped on this one. That was a really odd coincidence. So Mr. Poole, some people taking him seriously, other people blocking him in the community. The XRP Shaman writes, can't find this tweet on Mr. Poole's Twitter. Is it one of the ones he deleted? Can anyone except Cugs actually confirm this was posted on his Twitter, the date it says? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Apparently here, JT Marlin XRP Financial does uh, post it as well. I went to his Twitter and I could not find it either. Vemevo writes, Vanguard logo is a ship. Uh, you can see that there, and that is indeed a part of a Ripple connection. So ships, waves, ripples in the ocean, all uh, very thematic for Ripple the company, for XRP, for the XRP community as a whole. And for all these riddles we're seeing, is it just a coincidence? Does Mr. Poole know more uh, than many of us originally thought? Or could it just be that the team at Ripple is trolling XRP hodlers? It could be. I mean, you don't think these guys have eyes on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, to see what we're all discussing with regards to XRP. David Schwartz has indeed publicly come out and said, you know, the conspiracies involving XRP are ridiculous. So maybe it's their way of trying to get us talking. And if that's correct, well, then they've succeeded.
Guys, I wanted to finish this video off with a bit of a price prediction. I thought I'd go old school for the two year anniversary of the Working Money Channel. And so I haven't actually looked at an XRP price prediction uh, from this way before. So let's get into it. Um, I wanted to essentially compare uh, the Bitcoin rallies with XRP rallies adjusting for supply. That is important to note because uh, one of the arguments against XRP being able to rally to triple digits is because there is so much supply. Well, I took a look at Bitcoin and I adjusted for supply when Bitcoin was worth 20 cents. And so let's start there. So back in December 2010, Bitcoin was at 20 cents. Now, yesterday when I was uh, looking through these numbers, when I was doing the research on this, XRP was trading at about... Uh, 20 cents right now it's at 194.194 but 20 cents close enough if we go back uh, to the Bitcoin chart back from this is the BLX Bitcoin liquidity index and I'm just gonna put it on the daily for a second here guys uh, and if we can get right back to uh, where is it no this isn't where I want to go BLX there we go okay let's go right back uh, all the way past all these halvenings, right back to the beginning here, Bitcoin, well, close to the beginning, rather. Bitcoin in December 2010, as you guys can see way back here, Bitcoin 2010, uh, we saw a price of 20 cents. Yeah, it was around here. It was, it was trading at about 20 cents uh, back in December of 2010, okay, right in around here. After a rally, the price came down, and then it soared all the way to about $31. That was the new all-time high for Bitcoin, and that uh, hit back in June 2011. So 20 cents to $31. So first, let's start with that for Bitcoin. 20 cents to $31, guys. That represents uh, an increase of about 159.5 times. Okay, these numbers are going to be important later on because I'm going to adjust, as I mentioned, for circulating supply. What we have to understand, though, about 2010 and how it's different from 2020 is that there were a lot less Bitcoin in circulation at that time. So I had to do some research and I couldn't actually find the number of Bitcoin in circulation in December 2020, uh, although there were some charts to that effect. And if I just kind of, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't really get the exact, exact number, but if I kind of looked here it was anywhere between 4000 and 5200 somewhere around there it's about 4500 on this chart here i looked at a couple of different ones on this chart here the end of 2010 sorry yeah it's the end of 2010 which would bring us down here so roughly about 40 so anywhere between three and yeah, on the higher end of three and six or so 45 i kind of estimated at about 45 i keep saying 4500 4.5 million btc were in the ecosystem at that time so let's put that in here guys i am taking a few liberties here just because i can't find the exact numbers but based on these charts it looks as if that number is approximately correct okay 4.5 million bitcoin in circulation at that time and we did see an increase from 20 cents to three dollars and 90 cents and that represents a 159.5 times increase so what would that mean what was the market cap of the crypto market in late 2010 well we can ultimately assume there weren't many other coins if there were other coins they didn't represent too much of the market cap uh we're assuming bitcoin takes up most of the market cap again guys i'm taking a few liberties here just because this uh, data is so old and i can't find exact numbers on it but if you multiply 4.5 million times 20 cents that would mean that the market cap was about 900 000, okay the market cap was about 900 000 in late 2010 and we're taking the liberty of saying that Bitcoin is approximately 100% of the market cap just because the market was so small at that time. Okay, but we did see Bitcoin rise 159.5 times way back when. Okay, it did go from 20 cents all the way to about $31.90. So how does that relate to XRP and how are we going to adjust these numbers? So XRP in June, 2020, right now we're seeing XRP at roughly 20 cents, give or take yesterday was at 20 cents and the circulating supply of XRP. Well, we know that the circulating supply right now is roughly 44 billion, 100 million. Okay. I'm not going to use the exact number. I'm using approximations. We know it is about 44.1 billion XRP. That is what is circulating in the ecosystem today. 
And that's being fairly generous because we do have to remember that not all 44.1 billion XRP are circulating. You know, some of that is on the sidelines, as Ripple mentioned in a report, that they are holding some of this quote unquote circulating supply for uh, future deals. They've earmarked it, set it aside. So not all 44.1 billion is in circulation. So even if we're being generous and saying 44.1 is in circulation, that's the number we have. That's the number we're going to use, but it's actually probably less than that. And so if we needed to see XRP go from 20 cents to $31.90, that would also represent a 159.5 times increase. But let's not forget that this number is way larger than this number here, the circulating supply, where is it? The, the circulating supply, or rather no, it's the market cap, the circulating supply back in 2010. So if Bitcoin went up 159.5 times with this circulating supply and you take into account the difference uh, because the circulating supply is so much more. So, of course, that will affect the price because there's so much more supply that makes for a 0.0162 times increase, which would make XRP pump to 0.203 cents. OK, so a pump of 0.003 sense yeah what a pump that's crap that's total and utter crap but guys there is one thing we are not taking in account and that is the size of the crypto market today let's not forget today's market cap is approximately 265.5 billion and if XRP's market cap is about roughly 8.5 billion it represents 3.2 percent of the entire market okay i'm using this number here it's roughly 8.5 billion that is the market cap for xrp 3.2 percent of the entire market out of the 5,000 plus coins it represents 3.2 percent but let's just take a look at xrp and let's not even consider uh the fomo let's not consider the fact that xrp has a high ranking on coin market cap and let's not consider that people will dump money into xrp during the next bull rally okay none of that considered let's take a look at the numbers we have so what do we have xrp's market cap alone is 9444.4 times okay guys larger than bitcoin's market cap was way back when so if we plug those numbers in here and we take the original 0.0162 X factor times 9,444.4, that would adjust the number to 153 X. So now when you plug that in, 20 cents times an increase of 153 actually brings us to an XRP price of roughly $30.60. That's right, very, very close to where Bitcoin rallied to back in 2010, just uh, based on the adjustment in circulating supply and the sheer size of the crypto space. More money is in it, which means more money is going to flow through these coins. And not only that, guys, I just wanted to bring up one last thing here. When we bring up XRP here on the chart, I'm just going to get rid of that. I got a Fibonacci retracement here. And uh, if you take the last rally, drag it all the way down to the trough of the uh, bear market for that last rally back in July 2017, okay, when XRP pumped uh, up to 39 cents, it went right back down to about 12 and a half cents, okay, before our last pump that we had. And what I did was I took the 0.382 line, okay, and I took it right up to the top there. And as you can see here, that lines up quite well with the top up here. And then this second line here actually goes right into that. I don't know if you guys can see that. This line here kind of falls right into that level of resistance, that second line. So the top line hits uh, close to the top. The 3.816 line falls right into that level of demand. Now, when I take the Fibonacci retracement and I plot it on this chart here, uh, this most recent bull run. What do we have here, guys? Let's see if we can zoom out. Taking it from the top there. Uh, where was that? Yeah, that was about there. Okay, bringing it right down to the bottom of the trough of the market, which brings us to about, yes, down to there. Okay. And if we adjust, uh, first we got to take it off auto. And if we adjust for that 0.382 line there, okay, bringing that right up to the top, where does that bring us, guys? The top line up here 
brings us all the way to about $35. Okay, that's about a $35 target. But then we've got this line here that falls right in that demand zone, brings us to about $30.16. $30 falling right into that range. Could we see a $30.60 XRP in the next bull run? I think it's quite possible, depends on how much money gets pumped into XRP this time around, but that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.